Hello everyone, Atheatos here and uh, this time I have for you a review and optimization guide for this uh, 386 system. The main star of course is uh, this uh, motherboard. It is the M326 uh, version 5.2 with a PC chips uh, chipset. Then uh, we have this uh, HMC multi-controller and finally we have this uh, Trident TVGA 8900D-R. As usual I will go step by step and uh, present all this in detail and uh, also give you the optimal settings uh, for this along with some uh, benchmarks. So first of all I want to emphasize the importance of optimizations for a system like that and uh, here I have this view for uh, the default config. So this is the performance by having the jumpers uh, as the game and uh, setting uh, default to the BIOS settings. And first of all here we have memory bandwidth at uh, 18.9. With the optimizations this uh, jumped to 33.2. This is an increase of uh, 75%. Then uh, we also see here the VGA memory speed. This is uh, how fast the system can uh, write to the video memory. And the speed up here was uh, spectacular at uh, 350%. And finally here the hard disk speed uh, from 1.3 megabytes per second to nearly 2 megabytes per second. And uh, yeah, this is again uh, more than 50% of speed up. So stay with me with this video. I will get you step by step to all these optimizations that uh, made me reach uh, these results. So first of all let me tell you that as a collector my main focus uh, is uh, Pedium systems and later. So yeah in general I didn't have any intention to get into 386 stuff but it just happened that uh, when I was buying from some seller uh, he said to me oh I also have this uh, 386 uh, system. In the pictures it uh, looked uh, perfectly fine. However, he said to me that uh, I don't have an ESA VGA card and I cannot test it. So in the end I got uh, this uh, bundle here for only 30 euros and it worked perfectly in the end. So yeah, this was a very good deal for me. I didn't only got the motherboard, I also got uh, this multi-card and uh, 8 megabytes of uh, RAM. He also included this original uh, motherboard user guide. That was an unexpected uh, addition. It's very nice, it's, uh, it has all the basic stuff and uh, nothing more. So let's have a look uh, in our motherboard. This is a very nice one, uh, very compact and uh, integrated. I really like uh, small motherboards like that. To my understanding this uh, M326 motherboard is uh, quite common. And uh, there are many many revisions of this board. Uh, this uh, 5.2 is probably one of the latest ones and first of all here we have an integrated CPU but uh, depending on uh, your revision you might have the socket here uh, or a different model of CPU. The CPU that comes with my motherboard is the AMD AM386DX at uh, 40 MHz. This is the fastest uh, official 386 chip uh, ever produced and it's also a very classic and uh, very common chip. Then here if we go a little bit higher we have uh, 128 kilobytes of uh, CAS on the motherboard. As uh, 386 uh, chips do not have any integrated uh, CAS, uh, this CAS here uh, acts as a level 1 CAS. Then for the main memory we have 8 slots uh, of uh, SIM 30 pin. That means uh, two banks of uh, four uh, slot seats. And if we check the manual, uh, yeah, the motherboard uh, supports uh, SIM modules of uh, four megabytes. That means that the maximum supported memory is 32 megabytes. Now there are very few jumpers uh, for this motherboard. Uh, and this is what I like uh, with uh, 386 systems. This uh, J5 here is an important one. It is uh, this one here. And uh, you have to set this correctly depending on whether you have a 387 coprocessor installed or not. If you set this incorrectly then the system will not boot. Speaking of uh, coprocessors, this is uh, my little collection here. These are basically external floating point units. I have more or less uh, one uh, from every brand. And all these models are the top models that uh, can uh, work uh, perfectly fine at uh, 40 MHz. 
I have done a little bit of testing with this, uh, but uh, yeah, this is not uh, the topic of this video. And uh, we will come back to this uh, some other time. So, of course, the final piece of the puzzle here is uh, the clock generator and this pin here. With this, we can set the clock of uh, the CPU to 33 MHz or 40 MHz. The clock generator is a phase link uh, PLL52C05S and uh, I searched the internet. At first I couldn't find any information about this, but uh, after a lot of search I concluded that uh, this chip is actually equivalent to this uh, AV9107C-05. So the two chips are 100% uh, uh, pin compatible. And uh, here is the table of uh, the frequencies that uh, can be generated. Keep in mind that uh, for 386 machines, uh, 80 MHz uh, generated clock means that the CPU will operate at uh, 40 MHz. So yeah, in general the CPU works uh, in uh, half the frequency of the main PLL. In this motherboard, uh, the FS1 pin is tied uh, to 1, so you cannot uh, easily change it. And uh, you have this option with uh, jumper 4 uh, to set uh, the FS0. And so select between uh, 33 MHz uh, CPU and uh, 40 MHz CPU. In theory, with this PLL, uh, you can also have a 25 MHz and 20 MHz CPU. But to do that, uh, you have to change the voltage uh, here in the fifth pin of uh, this chip. So in the end, if uh, someone uh, really wants to do that, uh, he has to change here the fifth pin from uh, VDD to ground. This is a mod that uh, I might do in the future. Another possible mode is to probably remove this integrated uh, CPU here and uh, add the socket here. This is something that I will definitely do in the future. I have already got this uh, socket and I have got uh, the top uh, 386 chip from Intel and also ordered uh, the AMD chip uh, in the socketed form. And finally some uh, Cyrix Ti uh, 486 DLC that is supported by this uh, motherboard and it is a hybrid between a 386 and 486. That's probably the fastest uh, possible chip that uh, can work with this motherboard. I will come uh, back to you with all this stuff in the next video. Now regarding mods, in this video I will show you how to replace this battery with uh, a lithium one. So stay until the end of the video if you are interested in this information. And uh, that is about uh, our motherboard. Next uh, we have uh, this uh, HMC multi-controller. This uh, gives us uh, two serial ports, one game port, one parallel port, one floppy disk interface and uh, one ID interface. When I first saw this uh, card I was uh, very confused of all these jumpers. Yeah, this legend here is uh, very confusing. All this is uh, the jumper one. And it is explained with two legends, uh, this one and this one. Some of the jumpers enable or disable these interfaces, uh, while some others uh, just configure the resources. And the main thing to note here is that uh, for enabling or disabling a function, putting a jumper on the selected position actually disables this uh, interface. So right here I have a jumper at positions 8, 10 and 13. That means I have uh, disabled the COM2, disabled uh, the parallel port and disabled the game port. So the rest uh, are all uh, enabled. Then there are a few more jumpers. Uh, I couldn't find an explanation about this. Uh, this uh, jumper 4 uh, has to do something with uh, some signaling here in the ESA bus. Uh, when I sorted this, uh, I got a lot of artifacts in the VGA output. So yeah, this is not a good idea. And uh, here in theory, you can select IRQ5 or IRQ7. And my card came in like that. Uh, I tried these two options, I didn't uh, notice any difference. So that is for the multi-card and uh, finally of course I had to buy an uh, ESA VGA card. Maybe I paid a bit too much uh, for this one. I searched a bit uh, in the forums and it looks like that uh, this one, the Trident uh, TVGA 8900D-R is actually one of the fastest ones. What I have here is the one megabyte version. There are many Trident uh, ESA VGA cards. Most of them are not uh, performing that well uh, and especially the 9000 uh, series is uh, very notorious for that. But yeah, really this uh, 
8900D-R is certainly one of the fastest. Right now I don't have other cards to compare this one, uh, so this is it for uh, this video. Now with cards like that uh, you should uh, always be careful of uh, jumpers, and this card came in with two ones here sorted. I tried to find a bit uh, information about this in the internet, uh, but uh, it's very hard to find uh, jumper information for a specific card. But uh, either way you should always uh, play with them. Some of them enable or disable uh, the ability to have 32-bit uh, uh, transfers on the ESA bus or change the weight states of the ESA bus. So in general these jumpers uh, can greatly affect the VGA performance for a card like that. And the card came in with the slowest uh, possible configuration. So later when I removed these jumpers I got a significant uh, performance boost. Yeah, removing both jumpers is uh, the best uh, possible configuration here. Then when I first uh, booted my system I had this strange problem here, where there is this noise. And yeah, here you can see more of this. And also here. And here. Yeah, this was very annoying. The problem goes with these electrolytic capacitors here. Don't forget this is a 30 year old uh, VGA card. This one in the corner was uh, definitely damaged, but either way I replaced all of them. The original capacitor were 10 microfarad uh, ones. I had a lot of uh, 10 microfarad uh, capacitors, uh, but in the end I decided to go a bit aggressive with this and uh, replace all of them with uh, 100 microfarad ones. And here is the result. As you can see the text is now totally clear. Yeah, you can see here. Same goes here in the BIOS. Yeah, this is perfect. So if you get any artifact like that, it's a good idea to replace your uh, capacitors uh, on the VGA card. As a final bit of information, yeah, this is the 1 megabyte uh, RAM version with the 32-bit uh, bus uh, DRAM and my VGA BIOS is uh, the C4.7. So that is uh, all for our hardware and uh, jumper optimizations. Here is the, our final assembled uh, setup. And okay, I'm using a, a classic uh, 80x to 80 adapter and a compact flash to ID adapter. So let's uh, boot uh, this now and uh, have a look in the BIOS. And uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, this BIOS has a very serious uh, limitation with uh, hard disk drives. The maximum possible uh, hard disk drive here is uh, 504 megabyte. You can set uh, this size manually by placing here uh, 1024. 16 heads, uh, this default. And again here uh, 124. And uh, 63 sectors. If you have a larger drive, the auto detect hard disk uh, will probably detect it but no more than uh, 504 megabytes uh, will be visible in DOS. Here I'm using a 512 megabyte uh, compact flash card that uh, results here in the BIOS to 490 megabytes. So it is uh, just uh, a little bit uh, less uh, than the maximum possible with its motherboard. Now of course the most important settings are here in the advanced uh, chipset setup. Here I have the default configuration and the first thing you need to do is uh, disable the auto config. This first option is the timings for the CAS. The fastest uh, possible setting is this one, the 2111. CAS right option again, these are the weight states, uh, the fastest is 0. These are the DRAM weight states, uh, again the fastest is uh, 0. And then uh, these two are uh, the clock for the keyboard and the clock for the ESA bus. You can set them uh, as a fraction of the CPU clock. And uh, yeah, there are really many options here uh, from uh, divide by 2 to divide by 8. 
The default is divided by 5, that means uh, 8 megahertz. For the keyboard, uh, yeah, in theory, if you have a faster clock, maybe the keyboard responds a bit uh, faster. Divide by 4 or uh, 10 megahertz was the fastest setting uh, where the keyboard was uh, still working for me. But I was uh, very surprised about the ESA bus. With my configuration, the system was completely stable uh, with uh, this setting here. That means that the uh, ESA bus was working at 13.4 uh, uh, megahertz. And of course this uh, boosted uh, significantly both the VGA performance and the ID performance. Then uh, these settings here uh, are used to limit uh, the casable area. You should leave them as they are. And then you have the shadow memory settings. These settings uh, do not make any significant difference most of the time. But uh, this one, this F segment uh, shadow RAM, looks like it's uh, very important if uh, you disable this, uh, the system will not boot. So that is uh, for the BIOS optimization guide. Now let's talk a bit about uh, benchmarks. What I tested here is uh, first of all uh, 3D Bench 1.0C with option 2. Then of course uh, you cannot uh, run uh, Chris 3D Bench because it uh, needs a floating point unit. Same goes for uh, Quake. So I went to PC Player Benchmark. This is the 320 by 200 uh, with the option 5. Then I went for a standard uh, Doom RAM with the option B. Of course a 3D6 machine is uh, quite slow, but uh, either way this is a good benchmark. After that, uh, okay, because we did a lot of uh, VGA related optimizations, I ran some specific tools uh, to see the VGA performance. The first one is uh, VGA speed. It uh, will run a quick test. And finally gives you this uh, score in frames per second. And then there is uh, vid speed. This has uh, many modes. I tested basically all the VGA ones, uh, the standard uh, VGA one with uh, L and then uh, RST that are the Super VGA modes. Again this uh, runs a couple of uh, tests here. And in the end you get a report like that. The important number here is uh, the first one. Uh, this is uh, the right speed of the frame buffer. And I always uh, kept uh, the best result uh, that is usually in the Super VGA mode. Just for reference the number I get here is basically the same as uh, someone can get from the landmark uh, system uh, speed uh, benchmark. So yeah, in general I kept uh, the vid um, speed uh, numbers. So now let's have a look on my benchmark results. As I said, I measured my different configurations with uh, five benchmarks in total. 3D Burns uh, 1.0C, PC Player Benchmark uh, at uh, 320 pixels, Doom, VGA Speed and Vid Speed. And first of all, this is uh, the default configuration with sticks uh, of RAM of uh, 1 MB each. Then I noticed uh, that uh, if I change this and uh, use uh, 4 MB sticks, 4 of them, I get uh, a slightly better performance in some benchmarks. I'm not really sure why this uh, happens, uh, maybe something related to the refresh times. But yeah, th there is a small difference between 1 and uh, 4 MB memory modules. Then for the next setup uh, I tweaked uh, the memory timings in the BIOS by reducing all the timings for the CASES and the RAM. Then for the next setup uh, I also removed uh, the two jumpers in the VGA card. And for the final final uh, configuration I also overclocked uh, the ESA bus using the setting I show you in the BIOS. So for uh, 3D bands uh, there is a difference of 13.4% between the basic configuration and the full optimized one. With the PC player bands uh, 15.6%. With Doom there was a very significant difference of uh, around 35%. Uh, and finally the two synthetic benchmarks uh, had an insane uh, speed up of uh, 230 and 100%. Uh, 
especially here this uh, VGA speed with the basic configuration we were at uh, 16.9 frames per second and the optimized one uh, scored uh, 55.9 now in total score um, we got a 1% increase uh, from going from uh, 1 megabyte memory modules to 4 megabyte memory modules then an additional uh, 3% uh, from optimizing the memory timings yeah i have to say that i was expecting something a bit more here uh, but uh, this uh, did not happen at most uh, we got maybe 9-10% here in the PC player benchmark and then on Doom in a lesser extent. So next uh, we got an additional 36% uh, 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 boost from uh, removing the jumpers on the VGA card. And finally of course another additional 17% uh, from overclocking the ESA bus. It's interesting to note here that um, with PC player benchmark I didn't notice any difference. But on other 3D benchmarks uh, the difference uh, was significant. So this is the opposite uh, picture of uh, what we saw with uh, the faster memory timings. In other words, uh, PC player benchmark uh, looks like it's uh, CPU limited, while the rest are uh, basically VGA speed uh, limited. Of course I will uh, link my measurements uh, in the description below. So with uh, that I conclude uh, my optimization guide and uh, measurements. And uh, the final part of this video as promised is uh, modding uh, this motherboard by replacing this uh, rechargeable uh, nickel metal battery with uh, a classic uh, lithium battery. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, most of you know why I do that. These batteries uh, are notorious for uh, leaking out onto the motherboard this liquid uh, damages the printed circuit and this is one of the main reasons that uh, most of these uh, motherboards uh, now are uh, not working anymore. Now it's not the easiest thing to do things like that uh, on the camera and uh, I have not uh, done any pre-work on this. So first step, I will measure the voltage here on the battery and it is 4.05. So this battery is probably not dead yet, but I noticed a little bit of leakage, so this uh, has to go. The important thing to note here is uh, this is a rechargeable battery. So when we power on our system, the voltage uh, jumps to 4.1. Uh, this is important because uh, these uh, lithium batteries here uh, are not rechargeable. And of course it's a really bad idea to apply any charge to them. So for that reason uh, we don't only need to replace the battery with a battery holder. Uh, but uh, also remove the charging ability of the motherboard. So I will remove the battery here. Yeah, that was quite easy. Uh, so yeah, then I clean up the holes from the solder. It looks like uh, there is a little bit of leak uh, out of uh, this battery, but uh, there's very little damage actually here. Either way, I will spray a bit of acid here. There is a little bit of uh, reaction. And then finish with uh, isopropyl alcohol. So this is uh, how it looks now. Yeah, I'm a bit lucky here, the damage is uh, very little. So what I have to do now is to make sure there's no charge uh, function on the motherboard. But yeah, of course right now we still have that. We actually get a full 5 volt here. Well, I'm really sorry guys, um, I had to do this offline after all. In the end, uh, the simplest way to do this is always to replace the battery with uh, the battery holder in series uh, with a Sotki diode. And this is a standard solution that will work in any motherboard. What I try to do here is to manipulate a bit uh, the charging circuit and so avoid the diode. But in the end, at least for this motherboard is... Uh, impossible. 
but let me give you a little bit of information that I got as I reversed uh, this uh, circuit here. First of all, uh, looks like that uh, all the BIOS settings are stored in the main chip. So, one or the other way, the battery is connected uh, here. And to be more exact to this uh, pin on the edge. Now this pin connects to this node here, next to the transistors. And uh, this node uh, connects uh, normally through as a resistor to this pin here. And the third pin connects to the battery. So for normal uh, operation there is this jumper here between 2 and 3. And basically this connects the battery through a resistor to this pin here of the main chip. I did my mod a bit the hard way here because I was experimenting. So in the end I replaced uh, the resistor with this diode. And my battery holder is directly connected to the two pins of the previous battery. For you I still think the best way is to just put uh, the diode uh, here in series with the battery holder. By the way the, the fourth pin is uh, for connecting an external battery. Uh, but here the motherboard expects 6 volts. So it passes this uh, through two diodes, this one, and then another one uh, around here, and finally connects this to pin 2. So these two diodes are only to create a voltage drop from 6 volt to below 5. So let's do a final test here. So now the voltage here is 3.3, uh, that is the voltage of the battery. The voltage after the diode is 3.2. This is why we choose the Schottky diode, it has a very low V-drop. And uh, of course also the voltage here is on the chip 3.2. Now if we power on this, the voltage here in the battery is still 3.3. Uh, this is a little bit higher than uh, before because uh, this diode have a a leakage current, or let's say reverse voltage current, that is uh, one uh, microamp. This is very low, I don't think it's a problem for the battery, but uh, yeah, it's there. So the voltage in the other side of the diode is 5 volts, because it comes from the charging circuit. And also if I measure here on the chip, it's of course 5 volts. So that is uh, for today's video. I hope uh, you liked it. I have a lot of uh, future plans uh, for modding uh, this motherboard. So leave me a like, uh, subscribe so that uh, you don't lose any future videos. And uh, yeah, see you again next time.